Good evening YouTube. Now I would like to discuss some of the publications that enlightened me and convinced me that the teachings of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society were wholly erroneous and cultic in nature. Now whilst we were in the army, when we were deployed and off duty, there was plenty of time for reading and one of the books that I did read was this book by Dr. Walter Martin, The Kingdom of the Cults. It's a classic work. He is an authority on sex and cults. Inter alia, the Jehovah's Witnesses. And he deals with the sect from its founding by Charles Taze Russell in the 1870s through the presidency of J.F. Rutherford and Nathan Homer Knorr and I think even into the, the presidency of Frederick W. Franz. But he expertly delves into the teachings and the doctrines and the beliefs of the Jehovah's Witnesses. And he shows that they are not at all on a par with those of Orthodox Christianity. It's an expert, excellent book, and um, by becoming acquainted with this, I was already aware by the time I left the army that there was a problem with the Jehovah's Witnesses vis-a-vis -vis the Christian Church. So or I'd met the Jehovah's Witnesses um, in the in 1986, 1987. It was in 1987 when I. Got, I started to become confused, 1988, and I, I managed to get hold of this book, Jehovah of the Watchtower, also written by Dr. Martin, Dr. Walter Martin, and a person called Norman Clan, and this goes a lot deeper into the doctrines of the Jehovah's Witnesses and into their New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, for it was necessary for the Jehovah's Witnesses to write their own Bible. They couldn't carry on um, using other versions and getting in a way with teaching their doctrines. So they had to come up with their own version of the Holy Scriptures to convince their followers that this was the true Bible or the true Scriptures. And this book reveals um, how that came about and who probably the authors were because as you know they're anonymous but that was an excellent work I then read this book by Robert Bauman Jr Jehovah's Witnesses Jesus Christ and the Gospel of John which deals exclusively with the three texts of Scripture John 1.1, 1, 1, John 8.58, and John chapter 10. And it deals with um, the verses that are um, misinterpreted by the New World Translation. And it's an expert rendition of the, you know, it goes into the Greek text. It's an expert and scholarly work. And it also exposes the fact that there are very little, if not any, if there are any um, credible scholars in the JW community. Um, so it's an excellent book that, and that helped me, you know, that really freed me from the shackles of the, the JW doctrine because I'd been reading the New World Translation, I'd read a lot of their publications, and I was even starting to think in the way Jehovah's Witnesses would think because whenever I heard scriptures read or came across some verses of scriptures whether in church or in a, in a book or even in the Bible I would think how would the JWs interpret this or, or how would they say it so already my mind was being affected by their false doctrines so it's easy to see that somebody immersed in that from childhood or even as a new convert somebody that's indoctrinated by the watchtower 
would find their mind, their thought processes changing. And I needed something, you know, that to sort of help liberate me from um, from these like strange and peculiar ways of thinking and terminology. And as I must say, that when I was reading the New World Translation, I did think that it was um, a very wooden and literal trans, you know, translation. It's a very literal way of r rendering the Greek. I'm not an expert, but um, it was easy to see that the, it was so literal that it was almost nonsensical, if not ridiculous. And uh, it was just so wooden and it seemed forced and artificial um, and, and weak, really. I couldn't see the, the need to um, publish such a translation other than to prop up the doctrines of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Another book that I read by Robert Bauman Jr. was Why You Should Believe in the Trinity. And this book did a lot to restore my faith in historic Christianity. It's a response to the JW booklet, Should You Believe in the Trinity, which has now since been removed from the, it's not on the JW website, jw.org, they don't acknowledge this publication, probably because they misquoted all of the early fathers um, in, in support of their arguments against there being a trinity. Whereas we do know that all of the anti nicene fathers, or the fathers before the Council of Nicaea, did believe in the Holy Trinity, and did believe in the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. And once again, it's got on the back, it's got this little uh, picture on um, live forever in paradise on earth, and it's got that picture like that. And they, funnily enough, they've always got these um, Marks and Spencer or modern clothing uh, or cultural dress um, of the 20th century on. Um, you know, it's not a world, it's not the new heavens and the new earth. It seems to be this world that we live in now, that um, they depict in their publications. But um, that book, why you, why you Should Believe in the Trinity, corrected the misquotes of the Watchtower and exposed them and showed that, yes, the Fathers did believe in the Trinity and how the Bible does teach that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. We may not understand it, but if God is God, then we, surely we cannot comprehend him anyway. The scriptures say in Matthew chapter 11 um, that no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and no man knows the Son. No, no one knows the Father but the Son, and he to whom he will reveal him. So um, that is, this is an excellent book, and that helped um, restore my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful for that. There's another book. I read a, another couple of books by Jehovah's Witnesses. This one, of course, would be on the Jehovah's Witness ban list. 30 Years a Watchtower Slave by William J. Schnell. And this is the unabridged edition. And uh, the Confessions of a Converted Jehovah's Witness. And he tells us, how in the early years of the Bible students during the war, or previous, prior to the war in fact, and during the war, he had been a Jehovah's Witness in Germany. And how he and how he realized that it was a, a cult. And then we have Ted Dencher, Why I Left Jehovah's Witnesses. That was a fantastic book that I read as well in the 90s. I read that. And that was also instrumental in strengthening and fortifying my convictions that um, the Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult. And then I read um, another book by Ruth Tucker. Now, Ruth Tucker was, the last I heard, she was at Calvin Theological Seminary. But she wrote this book from a different perspective, also about different cults, um, including the Jehovah's Witnesses. She was very fair in dealing with the evidence, whereas Walter, Dr. Walter Martin quoted um, from the Brooklyn Daily Eagle, or the Brooklyn Eagle, on um, Pastor Russell's wheat scam, 
you know his miracle wheat he claimed him that he had uh, miracle wheat miracle wheat that was better than other wheat and and the brooklyn eagle was constantly reporting on the activities of pastor russell and she said it would be unfair to cite as evidence uh, a newspaper you know um a newspaper clipping and that's really quite correct um i would really appeal to the court transcripts um, that deal with um, with such incidents and also with the Watchtower publications themselves as authorities and um, and contemporary records you know rather than a newspaper but um, that that is an excellent expose of the Jehovah's Witnesses as well and also there's another classic called the four major cults by A. A. Hukima um, a brilliant theologian um, once again an excellent um, and concise um, history of the Jehovah's Witnesses um, an assessment of their theology um, if you can call it that of their peculiar doctrines um, and he uh, and he has some very useful appendices in here dealing with the strange beliefs of the Jehovah's Witnesses and that was an excellent book and um, I'm also indebted to my mother-in-law, Les Dawson would roll in his grave, <laughs> but um, my mother-in-law, believe it or not, kicked off my collection of Watchtower literature. And one day I was, was visiting her and um, I mentioned my interest in the Jehovah's Witnesses. And she says, oh, I've got a Jehovah's Witness Bible and you can have it. I said, oh. She says, it's an old one, a King James Version. I said, really? And um, she gave me this this Bible here. Um, there we are. The Holy Bible, Bible Students Edition. And on this first page here, I don't know if you can make that out, but that seems, it says uh, 1910 date 1910 and it's a King James Version the Holy Bible Old and New Testaments published by the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society appointed to be read in churches not Kingdom Halls <laughs> although they did have Kingdom Halls back then I believe but basically it's a, a Berean it contains a Berean topical index and it's got a commentary, a verse-by-verse -verse commentary on the Bible. Of course, because at this stage, this is the King James Version, they had to rewrite in the commentary. That was how they um, brainwashed people or, or indoctrinated them. So there they have the, um, the Dawn Bible Students Scripture Studies. And there you have the commentary starting. You see? And uh, Biblical Comments scripture studies of the watchtower etc and it links all the cross references of zion's watchtower and where they've dealt with whatever subject and the zion's watchtower and dawn studies comments and the studies in the scriptures by cj woodworth interestingly enough cj woodworth now he I, I believe he wrote the finnish mystery um he was one of the co-authors of the finnish mystery which is a lunacy it's a lunatic rendition of the seventh volume of the studies in the scriptures. And here we are, the sermon is... So, for example, in um, Isaiah 19 or 20, I believe, it's talking about the, the commentary on the, the... There'll be an altar in that day on the border of the land of Egypt. And they interpret that as the pyramid, which was built by... Melchizedek. Um, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. But um, so I'm really thankful. This is as rare as hen's teeth, and I'm glad that my uh, my mother-in-law gave me this. And um, really, that's one of the best uh, source books I have on the the sect that became the Jehovah's Witnesses, but were originally the Bible students with Pastor Charles Taze Russell. And that I'm indebted to her for that. So that's um, another publication. And I just wanted to um, really just round off tonight's uh, talk with that. 
that yes, there was light at the end of the tunnel for me. My world, they rocked my world. I was shaken. I had to find out, is this the truth or not? And I went to the Bible and with the aid of some godly men who wrote these books as well, I was able to cement um, my conviction that um, the Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult and that we, we don't need um, the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society to tell us what the Bible teaches. The Bible is God's word. It's a living word. The Holy Spirit um, has breathed, God breathed um, the text and um, God can speak to us through his word directly. And um, we don't need any man to, to stand between us and God's word. We can go straight to the word of God and find the Lord Jesus Christ in the Holy Scriptures. That's what he said himself. And um, we, we don't need any other man really to guide us there. Um, so I went to the scripture, I must emphasize, I went to the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, um, before I even read these other books. Um, I was convinced of the Bible. Um, I knew that somehow they were twisting the words of the Bible, but they did mess around with me. I, they threw me off, they, they, it confused me for a while until I got to grips with it, and these books helped me. Um, just cemented um, what I already believed, really, and knew to be true. And um, this was another good book, Reasoning from the Scriptures with the Jehovah's Witnesses by Ron Rose. That was a response to that book, Reasoning from the Scriptures. And um, he goes topic by topic in here about the, um, the, the false prophecies of the Jehovah's Witnesses. They, they prophesied the end would come in 1914. Then they said it would be 1925. Then they said it was 1975. They'd also, um, they believe, I mean, and from the studies of the scriptures, right up until, um, I think it was 1943, when the truth, the book, The Truth Shall Set You Free, um, came out. Um, right until that book came out, um, they believed that 1874 was when the Lord Jesus Christ returned. Now they believe it's 1914. So, it's, there's some... There's been some weird, um, sorry about that, there's been some weird um, um, prophecies they've made. And at the time they were very dogmatic about them. So if you didn't believe that, that you would have been uh, disfellowshipped or ostracized by them, you know, by that sect. So um, it's worth looking into and um, testing whether to see if these prophets are actually true prophets or false prophets, according to the word of God. Thank you for listening and God bless you.